Welcome to the Power Hour. This is the Tony Espo Show. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in. This is the Tony Espo Show, episode two, and tonight I have a very special guest with me, Natalie Stavola. Hey, guys. She is a life and dating coach, and uh, go ahead and take it away, Natalie. Yeah, so thank you for having me on. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, thank you for being here. <laughs> so, yes, I'm a life and dating coach. Um, I help anyone from around the world. Um, mostly it's been with men for the last several years, but I'm starting to open that up, and, and um, really it's, you know, anyway. Um, it, it, because the things that I teach and I coach is that a lot of times we have, we see the most problems, we can overcome the most obstacles when it comes to dating and relationships. Uh, and, you know, we'll start dating or we won't be dating at all or we won't be able to find a date or you're in repeat cycles of like toxic situationships. And um, that's typically when people will find me or come to me or that's the realm because whenever we're attached to someone or even something which is why i say life too whenever we're attached to something something's bothering us something's triggering us we can't get what we want we can't get that girl we can't get that dude we can't you know get that uh person to go out on a date with us or message us back in the dms so are you more focused on being a life coach or dating coach that's the thing is that it's like it's mostly that um when someone has these issues and these problems i'm able to kind of take it back to their life and what happened in their relationships yeah, so you kind of tie the two in together exactly so okay. it's all about our our relationships and it's all about how we are perceiving those relationships in all areas okay and uh, what is the difference between a life coach and dating coach? And do you have certain clients where you only give life advice to, uh, you know, compared to those that only need dating advice? Yeah, absolutely. I've had some clients where, because we've already, um, they've already had uh, amazing boundaries and amazing overcoming of their hurdles um, that we don't really need to focus on their relationship stuff anymore because they know what they bring to the table now. They see their worth. They're not doing the nice guy syndrome. They're not sitting there and the people nice pleasing. Can, yes. you, can you go over that? Yes. So a lot of times, I know you've heard this. I'm sure you've I heard mean, this. I, I think I'm kind of a nice guy. Is, no, is, well, you are, but you have boundaries. Is that, I feel is like that good or is that bad? it's good. So there's a difference between a lot of guys will get really upset over hearing that they're a nice guy sure. because as a woman, we don't know this. Yeah, kind of like the good guy finishes last. Exactly. Kind of the nice guy finishes the nice last. Guy, the nice yes. guy finishes last. So what happens is, is that a lot of people, especially men, will think that like they can't be the uh, respectful human being because they won't be able to get a woman. The, that they have to be the bad boy or the asshole. Right. The aggressive asshole because that's how you get a woman. But that's not the case. That's how you get a toxic woman. I think I've got a good balance on both. You do? Uh, yeah. You know, I know. Thank you. <laughs> I know when to be good. I know when to be bad. Yeah. Right? I'm a good boy, a good man, bad yes. boy. Yeah. <laughs> what is it like? I I only know the freak in the sh streets. No. Freak. I, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Freak, that's freak in the streets. Yeah, I'm a freak in the streets. <laughs> Forget it. Uh. Um, but yeah, it's that. So there's a difference between being a nice guy versus like being a respectful human being, but knowing how to respect yourself first. Cause the nice guy syndrome comes from, I don't think that I'm good enough. So I have to people please in order to get you to like me. Okay. And how did you get into this? Woo! Oh, is that a good question? It's a good question. Um, I have, I grew up with a really crazy family, Irish Italian. Okay. Um, I'm also, Irish yeah. <laughs> also so have a crazy know. family. Yeah. So I, I actually, when I went to college, I studied psychology because I was very fascinated by the human brain yeah. and why we do what we do, yeah. which makes us good artists too. Like why we jump into art and like we're fascinated by humans. <laughs> You're like, why are they doing that? So I've always kind of helped people. I just, for the longest time, did it at the detriment to my own mental health. Okay. I would help you, but not be able to help me. I would empower you, but I couldn't empower myself. So I had to really hit my own bottoms to learn how to start like, I you know jumped into a 12 step program. I started getting into therapy. I um, started learning more how to overcome my obstacles and actually respect myself. Okay. And then what happened was um, there, I wound up working for a company for a little bit that um, was also in coaching and I learned about this whole industry. Cause I was looking at going back to school, getting my master's degree, but it would take me out of my art right. 
and I'm really big on I overcome my own obstacles and I'm a I'm a product of like I practice what I preach. Yeah. So I'm gonna overcome my stuff and then I'll teach you and show you how to do the same. But there I'm gonna go. be doing it too. Do you have a website and everything that I do. people can check out? Yes, lovecoach247.com. There you go. And, and do you have courses or set up or uh, classes? One on one coaching right now. One on one coaching? Yeah, either That's mentorship great. or one on one. Like if someone needs like a pop off or a little quickie as an hour. Um, <laughs> but like a, you know, like a tune up or if someone is dealing with a specific situation, yeah. there's like one hour coaching sessions and then there's like packages, mentoring. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. Uh, and how, were you always so passionate about this? Do you feel like you've gone through so much that you learned and with, you know, all of a sudden out of nowhere or one day you were like, I can offer a lot of value giving back my experiences or, or telling people my experiences and giving my knowledge to people that haven't, or that are going through the, the, mm -hmm. the same situation as possibly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, that's actually, that's probably the, one of the, the biggest healing things in life. Okay. Because they teach you that in so many programs, 12 step programs, or even like in any type of, any type of healing work that you do. Yeah. Giving back and helping another human being, especially when they relate to you or you're, they go through what you've been through. Right. It's the biggest healing you can get, which also is why there can be a lot of problems in the healing community and in the um, spiritual community and the um, coaching community. And yeah. even in therapy is because sometimes we can project too much. So, yeah. Oh yeah. So it's, it's mostly that when I started in 12 step programs, and I started sponsoring in those programs, yeah. it blew my mind when someone would like need help with something that they were so embarrassed about or so ashamed about. And I'm literally like, there was one time where um, I spit coffee at my sponsee on a program once <laughs> because she's, I couldn't believe it. Something came out of her mouth that I had literally said two years prior that I was so embarrassed about, so ashamed about. I was like, I'm gonna take this to my grave. But I needed it. I needed it to come out of me. I couldn't hold on to this anymore. Two years later, this girl says it, and I spit my coffee on her face, and I died laughing. And she was mortified. And I was like, Hold on one second. You said the exact same thing, word for word, that I said two years ago. This is great. <laughs> so, have you changed a lot of lives already? How long have you been doing so. this? I hope so. I've been helping people my whole life. Um, hopefully, nice. it's doing it in a better way in the last uh, five years, yeah. well, longer. Um, but five years, I've I've been more cognizant of it. So I've had people tell me okay. absolutely that I've changed their life and stuff. But like to be honest, I'm I'm literally only passing on information. Good. You know what I mean? Good. I'm passing on the same information that I was given. I'm, yeah. You know, I'm telling you to do the same stuff that I'm doing today. And that's that's great because uh, there's a lot of people that don't get that information. Yeah. So if they follow you, um, they, yeah. they'll get it. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And you can get that information and, anywhere. And that's how it works for a lot of different people with a lot of different businesses and stuff like that. It's all Ooh. about getting that information and what your resources to get that information. Yeah. I mean, for okay, so for instance, like for your stuff, how, how's your relationship life going? <laughs> oh boy. Um, but you've overcome a lot. Like I've watched, I've kind I've of, a lot. yeah. Overcome a lot. You, uh, yeah. Uh, in what ways? I mean, I, there's been things taken from you that I've seen and then you wound up getting like your car back like that. Like yeah. that was huge. Yeah. I but couldn't believe that. For those of you that don't know, my car was stolen, but, uh, but thankfully I found it. Or, mm -hmm. Well, the police found it a month later. Yeah. Uh, so. That was great. Uh, but yeah, I've gone through so much myself. Yeah. Um, that's awesome though. Yeah. Uh, you're able to change lives uh, and, and people from all around the world or just in this country are really working with you. All around the world. Yeah. I've gotten a coach, which means too that I have to do my due diligence on like learning about different cultures because it's different. It's going to be different dating in Spain just yeah. slightly than it is in America than it yeah. is in, you know. So let's break it down a little bit. When, yeah. When it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to dating, uh -huh. how do you, can you give us like a step-by-step -step process on how you can help some somebody yeah. from, from beginning to end? I mean... Yeah. You don't have to tell us all of your secrets, but. Yeah. My secrets are not even, that's what I'm saying is that it's like everything that I could say or give is already out there. The information is literally free. It's just that people will go to a coach or pay a coach or yeah. go to someone because I'm going to spend one on one time with you breaking it down and implementing it into your life so you get it. But the main thing is like, um, here's the big thing there's a difference between ugh, the, like, I could give you, I could give someone pickup lines all day, right. but that stuff doesn't really like work. 
It's all about your You're internal those stuff. Cheesy pickup pick lines that I use all the time. No, cheesy no. ones work. Cheesy ones cheesy work. Ones, oh, dude, cheesy ones work all, all right, day guys, long. <laughs> make note of that. Cheesy ones work. But for instance, like. Do you have a favorite cheesy quote? Cheesy pickup line? I don't. No? I don't. But like cheesy stuff yeah. that makes me laugh. Oh. <laughs> All day, okay, all day. Cool. Or people in general that it's mostly about alignment. I've got a lot. So. Yeah. So <laughs> the main thing is about first, you want to figure out yourself and learn about yourself and learn about what you're in alignment with. Because okay. otherwise, it's just it's just dumb. You're going to be okay. throwing spaghetti at a wall, seeing what sticks. Because you're like, oh, pretty girl. Oh, pretty girl. Oh, pretty girl. It's just, <laughs> like, yeah. like they've got shiny ball syndrome, right? <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Yeah, exactly. When you walk into a club, you see a lot of guys. Yeah. Their heads just and you're going to be banging your head against the wall and getting really upset. You're going to be comparing yourself to other men thinking that oh that dude gets you mm -hmm. know pulls in mm -hmm. all the chicks and you're just gonna be your energy walks into a room before you do that's true and women are feelers so the biggest thing is that a woman's gonna feel whether or not you're safe mm -hmm. or whether you're not, you're not safe and some of this stuff it's like if you're not working on yourself and kind of undoing your limiting beliefs so for instance the biggest the main thing that I'll do is I'm gonna help identify what are your limiting beliefs what are the voices in your head and in your subconscious telling you that's why it works either with life or relationship or whatever now we live in Los Angeles and I feel mm -hmm. like dating in LA is very challenging very difficult because um, I've, I've tried you know things don't happen they, they haven't worked out. Uh, um, LA is a different beast, I'll admit. Yeah, because everyone's very independent and they yeah. are focused on themselves. Yeah. And so it's kind of hard to align yourself with someone else's path, you know, because they're also independent and, and you're not on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, that's, and that's how it should be with most relationships and people. Yeah. Uh, like you've got to be on that same page, of course. Yeah, you're or, reading or, them Yeah. Um, but everyone's so focused and goal driven here in this city, especially. Yeah. Like they don't have the time or want to date. Uh, I feel like it's very different dating in LA compared to a lot of other cities or states, right? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Each some of the major cities and states, you have whole different because you have different cultures intermixed in there. Right. Where LA is such a melting pot of so many different cultures and people that yeah. like you have people like for instance, women in Spain pay for like will pay for a check. They're not about a dude paying because they're like, I don't want to feel like I owe yeah. him something. Yeah. But now, but then women in America are taught that if we, if we pay, we've been made fun of for it before. We've sure. been put down for it. So it's a very, yeah. you're, so it's, again, it's really, really, really about you finding out you True. first. True. And if you live in a smaller city, smaller town, where it's more likely that people are trying to settle down. Yeah, but then you'll all also hear, no matter where you are, you're going to hear people that have limiting beliefs because they have trauma or because they've had negative things that have happened in life because that's just life. Yeah. You, you fall down, you make mistakes, right. no matter what. And so even if you didn't have like a terrible childhood, it doesn't matter because even if you fall on the sidewalk and scrape your knee, the back of your subconscious goes, oh, sidewalks are lava, sidewalks aren't safe. And then you have to take yourself back on that sidewalk yeah. and you have to reprogram your brain that goes, sidewalks are safe, I'm safe. It's the same way with dating. So the back of your mind is gonna say things like, it's always tough out here, I can't find anyone, everyone's just looking for uh, for themselves, I constantly date toxic chicks, toxic yeah, yeah. chicks have the best sex, whatever. <laughs> so if you keep saying, if you're, not you, not your conscious mind, right. if your right. subconscious mind keeps saying those things, you will walk. Those are obstacles. Those, and you'll walk into it every time. You're, right. you're going to create a confirmation bias. Right. What you fear, you're going to walk into because your subconscious mind is extremely simple. It, our subconscious mind is designed to keep us safe by keeping us right. So whether you're good enough or you're not good enough doesn't matter. You are literally going to prove yourself right either way. That makes sense. Yes. That's why I was like, <laughs> that's free information. Take that to the bank. Boom. <laughs> okay. Um, so what is the difference between dating, mm -hmm. a date, being, a, being a dating coach, dating coach and a life coach? So. Give us an idea of someone who needs life coaching. Yeah, great question. Um, so here's the thing. I think for coaching, I think that it doesn't actually matter because the information, when it's the, the, the stuff that I'm doing that I see in other coaches, which is subconscious reprogramming, inner child work, um, manifestation, unblocking, healing, that sort of thing, it really does, it's all the same. It's just in what modality does that coach like playing with? Mm -hmm. For me, I specialize mostly in like trauma and addiction. 
So that's why it's like people who are coming to me are going to be getting involved in toxic relationships or like can't date or hate themselves or have PTSD or whatever. And I'm like, usually what will happen is that they will either that will bleed out into other areas of their life or um, they'll have amazing like strong points in their life, like a strong career. But then their relationship life is terrible. (laughs) So it mostly is just with life it's going to look like things like um i'm i'm blocked up in my career Mm -hmm. um i can't seem to like believe in myself or make it um i'm staying stuck in that i'm not making the amount of money that i want to make um i'm having bad relationships with my family yeah um and it's more of like my like career goals a lot of times too got it yeah so most of the time what will happen is i'll have a client come in and we'll work on the dating Because that's just the biggest one. That's the one that your heart will hurt the most on too. It exposes you the most. So then after that, after we've unblocked there, then all of a sudden now it's like, so now let's take a look at like, you know, you keep pulling in toxic friendships or you have some narcissists as friends. Then, you know, and also like, why do you keep doing repeat career moves that like aren't, you're not actually happy in? Right. So. Uh, Now, are you in a relationship? multiple relationships multiple relationships <laughs> all right all right this is la you know everything. this is la i know i have a lot of um, clients that'll ask me that too and i'm like i'm a, a different type so for me i do not teach you how to bend over and take it and just be in a relationship and 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 just to be in one yeah i'm very 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 big on what do you align with and what are your values Got what it. are your core values and why are you what is your life purpose and until you find that there's no reason to really well i mean i guess you should should take a chance and pursue yeah. it you know if you find someone that fits that description yeah or, um but I, I i think you know if we don't have the same goals or at least be on the same yeah. page and if we don't have the same mindset and same motivation and like you exactly. don't have, we don't have to be exactly the same because that'll get boring right but you need to align in some ways i'm big on um, that too and, and, and if i don't see a future with you i'm mm-hmm. more than likely not going to date you yeah exactly and that's but that's huge but you see how you're like you're seeing that's so perfect. I hope people like repeat, like rewind <laughs> that and play that back. When you're coming to the table and you know what you're bringing to the table, now you look at people that you're dating and yeah. you go, what is this person offering in my life? Right. Because it is a partnership. And yeah. if you guys aren't going the same place, yeah. eventually you're going to part ways. And there's a lot of people that just spin their wills. They're, exactly. They're in relationships because they're, they're not independent. They nope. feel like they need someone for comfort. Validation. Yeah. Yeah, And and I just think that's a big waste of time. It is. And you're wasting the other person's time. Yeah. So the only time that I would really suggest someone like take themselves out of the dating field and out of relationships for a minute and like take a seat is if when you've just gotten out of a toxic relationship, you've just gotten out of a relationship or you're escaping and using people. Mm -hmm. If you're dating because you don't like yourself and you're using people for validation, take a seat. Ooh, take a seat because you're just going to wind up getting with women or men who are seeking validation too. This is where you're both going to be cheating on each other. You're going to be like fighting with each other. And then this adrenaline seeking behavior because you're, you're using a person like a drug. Yeah. So take a seat. Do you have, <laughs> do you have any, any interesting stories you can quickly tell us? Any so success many. stories you can tell us about? Yeah. Success story. I got, oh, I got a lot of those. Um, I've had, Okay. I've had clients where like they didn't realize that they were addicts or alcoholics yeah. and they were in so much pain that they were getting with people who were very abusive. Okay. And now like, for instance, the story of Amber Heard is out yeah. and yeah. I've watched a lot of people and people that I love and I care about, I've watched them look and go, oh no, women are now, and then I've watched men say this, right. that they've gone, oh no, um, women aren't going to be able to come out now and like share their story. I don't agree with that. I feel like I've watched, I'm, I've seen it happen in my own life. Mm -hmm. I've been a product of it. I've, it's happened to me where there have been women and men too. Don't worry. Everyone's (laughs) I've had my fair share of multiple toxic shit. So I know what I'm talking about. Um, but I've had, uh, and healed from it. Um, I've seen and had personal experience on women who were psychologically abusive, narcissistic, um, and uh, what that does to a human being, it destroys your mind. It just breaks you. It does. And what I've noticed is that the more people who have been overcoming narcissistic abuse and the more people who have been like healing from that, you can spot it a lot faster, especially when the entertainment industry, <laughs> we see it. All the time. <laughs> we see it. Um, <laughs> but it's wonderful because 
men today, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, because I, I mean, you know, I can only speak on seeing it as a woman. Yeah. But what it looks like is women started coming out more and finally realizing that we've been abused. And now we're, and then we went into like extreme feminism. Men, screw them! Which is just unhealed trauma spewing out, which is, <laughs> and, and instigates more trauma. And then men be quiet. Um, and in America, especially, and all you around think the it's world. it's finally calming down? Or yes, we... I think so. I think we're yeah. coming back to center. Good. I think so. Um, but then men started, men have only been told you're only allowed anger, right. and that's it. Right. Screw your feelings. If you say anything, you're a pussy. If you, like, you yeah. know, you're, you're, if you have a relationship and you say that you love the girl, you're a pussy whip, like, whatever. Yeah. And you're like. There's got to be a good, happy medium. Exactly. So it feels like a lot of men lately have finally realized that, like, oh, shit. What is this? I have an emotion? I have emotions other than anger? And then they came out and went to the extremes. And I've watched as like men have shamed other men for that. Mm -hmm. And it feels like there's more men taking their power back and going like, no, none of this toxic stuff. I hate the word toxic masculinity. I won't say that. <laughs> Don't like that term. Men started that, but yeah. I think it just turned kind of sour. Yeah. But um, men finally came out and they were like, we have emotions. We're human beings. We deserve to be treated with respect. Right. And and now it's like they went from being closed off to emotionally dumping. I get this question all the time. A lot of men are like, "What's the difference between being vulnerable?" Like I'm, I thought I was being vulnerable, but now she won't talk to me. And I'm like, "No, no, 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 sweetie, you just found out you had emotions and you dumped them on her like a therapist mm -hmm. or like a mom." And instead of actually being vulnerable, vulnerability is sharing information. Right. Like, hey, I'm experiencing some sadness today. Does that make, make a man weak? hell no that makes to a quality woman yeah. that shit's so sexy it's not even funny a dude who can literally like own his emotions and just speak on things like they're you know what i mean it's just a fact right. it's so sexy because it's so empowering and yeah. you'll get more women doing that because that more women will, will chase after you it shows confidence i think yeah because um someone who's close and blocked off like for me where i'm at now um, when I go out on a date with someone, I can feel whether or not that person is cold. Right. Oh, I hate it. And I'm like, and it's, which, which is hard because then I'm like, if they're attractive and I'm like, should I just have sex with them or no, <laughs> no, because I'm going to trigger some wounds. Damn it. Um, but if someone's cold and blocked off, mm -hmm. it's this, it's this coldness and it's like being with them, sleeping with them is empty. They don't know themselves. They're afraid of themselves. They got mommy issues. They got daddy issues. They got other people. I don't know. I don't care. Well, I mean, I can figure it out, but um you can feel it and then when but when you've done the work on yourself and this happens with men too when you've overcome that and you're open and you trust yourself you respect yourself you you know walk with that and you're able to like acknowledge your own stuff process your own emotions yeah that right there it's like this like openness and you and i know you've seen it i know you've had this happen because you're just you're a very <laughs> open person you will watch as like people will literally gravitate to you yeah so to answer the question again what I do is I teach you how to be a magnet, do the work, and literally you will not have to use the pickup line. You won't have to worry about approaching. I swear to God. I like it. You will have people like walking up to you and going, oh my God, there's something about you. There's this just, you have this really great energy. Yeah. And I do that left, er, left and right. Natalie's amazing, guys. If you do need some help or advice, <laughs> reach out to her. I'm definitely an honest one. It'll, and, we'll get to the real you're, world. You're, you have a website. You're on every social media platform. Yeah. Uh, what is your Instagram? Natalie Stavola at Natalie Stavola. I make funny go. videos. I make ridiculous videos. Educational videos. Educational all videos. Of all of it. Yeah, I know. Great. I'm still trying to see if I do. I like have a couple extra Instagrams for work, but I'm like, ugh, too much work. <laughs> <laughs> Find me on at Natalie Stavola or um, LoveCoach247.com nice. for dating and relationships. So, what's the bigger vision of this? Bigger vision is. So I also personally in my life, I do what you know. Um, I'm an actor, writer, producer, and yeah. I'm also a stand-up comic. Yeah. I'm also a slam poet. It's just all the, <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. It's, so for me, everything interconnects. Yeah. I lost my voice when or I was you've a you've at kid. least built it that way. I built it that way, yeah, yeah. exactly. Up. So for me, it's very big on like, I you know, used to not be able to have a voice or use it. Yeah. And in any area in my life, relationships, any of it. So for me, all the things are like, I'm very, I love helping other people. Good. I love empowering people to learn how to like own who they are, overcome their obstacles. And I'm, like I said, an example of it. So yeah. the big vision is 
eventually producing, writing, and like, you know, showing you on the movies, overcoming obstacles or making you laugh or whatever. And then no matter what, I'm always going to help people. I can't not. Like, I'm, I'll be on set and people will be like, um, <laughs> I have this problem with my relationship. I'm like, oh, now, well, we're on a break, so let's go. Now, we've mentioned guys a lot like yes. so far. Mm -hmm. um, you're helping a lot of women as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I help a lot of women as well. Um, with guys, I've liked it because it just, I've, I... Uh, used to grow up hanging out with them a lot. I can yeah. I can see that point, and also because, um, because I'm a woman, I can kind of offer that perspective on a female mind. Right. Um, that helps a lot, and and also is you it know, easier to work with women or men? Uh, yeah. Oh, such a good question. Um, it's easier to work with men sometimes. Yeah. I uh, only because it's I can be very like cut to the chase. And very like, you know, and with men, like just right now, the way the world is, yeah. it could be very programmed to be like, yo, brass tacks, lay it down, lay the floor plan out. And with women, myself included, by the way, us as women, yeah. oh my God, we call each other on the phone just to shoot the shit, but we don't really need advice. We just, we talk out loud. Yeah. We, we And so that's why it's like a lot of men will hear women and when you're in a relationship and you want to fix something. Yeah. And a woman's like, no, I didn't need advice there. I need fixing. I was just talking. <laughs> and you're like, ah, but you, so that's the difference. So um, I don't know. I, I have a couple girlfriends right now and a couple that are going through some stuff and I help when they ask. I don't right. do it without permission. And then um, I have a couple female clients now that nice. you've been helping. Kind of, reminds, amazing. kind of reminds me of the movie Hitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Essentially, yes. Hilarious. I love that movie. I love that movie. Um, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allergic to shellfish. I'm allergic to gluten. So I won't blow up like he did on the, <laughs> in the face or anything. I don't have like nothing like that. But I'm like, okay, I relate. I feel this. <laughs> Do you prefer like working with people online or in person? Online. Online. I think because I, I'm, I'm a big empath. Like, yeah. uh, so in person, it could be probably a little too heavy. Um because their emotions especially like i said usually people when you're going through something you hurt more you reach out for help more when it in, it's involved in a relationship yeah and so when it that's the case you're um you're going to be triggering um all of the emotions from childhood from mm -hmm. like your inner trauma so that can get heavy so like on the phone or like zoom i can see everything i can feel everything still even on the phone, I can still feel everything and see everything, but right, uh, I won't. Right. It won't be as heavy. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to my life personally, I think I'm, I, it, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I think I've got it handled pretty well. Looks um, like it from the outside. Now, when it comes to date, <laughs> when we come to dating, when like that's a different game, different story. Yeah. Um, I've tried. You know, I I haven't dated any, anyone for about three years already. Maybe almost four. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Only I feel, I feel well, just like I was saying earlier, my. You know, my situation is that I'm so focused and, and like so busy that I don't really like have the time to date somebody. Or, the, or that's been my excuse lately. That's one of the but limiting beliefs. <laughs> that's what I believe as well. Like if you are really into somebody, you will make that time. You yeah, know? or I would suggest this. So, and this will be a good technique. I wonder if I can use the board too. Here's a marker. Mm -hmm. So I'll use like, I'll do some of the, the the bigger ones for yours. And a lot of people have that is like, oh, I don't have time or like I'm working so much that like I, it just doesn't right. work. I You could even go to the root of that. And it could also be that like once you get to the root of why that limiting belief is there, it yeah. could be that like when you've opened yourself up, you got into a toxic relationship and it screwed up your career. Yeah. So now it's like the idea if you open yourself up and allow someone sure. in again and your career could I go guess under. I'll I'm just trying not to be too distracted, you know? Yeah. Um, but if that person pushes you forward and motivates you. and just, When you're in the right one. Yeah. But you want to identify what the fear is of, like, why. But if you're in a relationship where you're distracted and with a person that slows you down, mm -hmm. like, I don't I don't want to be in that situation. So, right, exactly. Um, so I haven't been with but anybody for three or four years. Yeah, now. but that's the fear there is that, like... Now, there's other times, too, where it's like, if you don't want to date or be in a relationship and you're in that space in your life where you just don't, you just want to play and have fun, yeah. like, I coach on that, too. Like, that's totally fine. I go through my moments where I'm like that, where I'm just right. like, for me, I 
my goals in life are more legacy. Yeah. I want to know that I helped people. Yeah. I don't need to like pop out a bunch of kids. Like that's yeah. not my yeah. thing. Not, not yet anyways. <laughs> yeah, not yet. I don't even know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Um, I'm good. I feel like with coaching and, and yeah. sponsees that. Those are my kids. I'm, I'm turning 35. Not to cut you off. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, and her We're birthday telling. is right around the corner as yes, well. Yes, we have the same. Both. It's so close. I'm the 12th. She's the 14th, 14th. of June. Mm -hmm. um, ha happy early birthday. Happy early birthday to you too. <laughs> should have one big party next year. Yo, I know. And you're going off and like... Vietnam. Um, Vietnam. <laughs> It'll be fun. Who randomly goes to Vietnam for their birthday? This guy does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I say that and I was like, I've been trying to go to Bali for the last two years. <laughs> and then the pandemic happened. I was like, come on. And like Bali was closed. Yeah. Uh, it was so close. All right. So ch do... um. For for yours first, it's yeah. once you want to have a relationship and you identify that, I think you want to find out. I like think why. I want a relationship now. I'm at that age, yeah, like 20, 35. Yeah. Um, you know, the last few years I was really just focused on work and and trying to grow exactly. as, a, as a person. And now I'm at a point in my life where everything really came together. Mm -hmm. And now I'm ready for someone to come yeah. along. So now you're going to have to start facing. You're going to do it either one way or another. When yeah. you start dating and you start opening yourself up, you're going to call. We call in people who will test us and right. who. And the reason why isn't because this is everything's happening to me. It's not because of that. It's because <laughs> when shit has happened from our past, yeah. we will wear those lenses. It's like breaking a pair of glasses, dunking them in beer, and then like putting them on. You are filtering your life right. through that lens. Right. So until you take the lenses off and go, oh shit, I got some broken lenses. Why are they broken? Let me fix them. Yeah. You're just going to keep, we, we will repeat the same mistakes kind of thing until you like get your ass kicked enough to learn your lesson. Right. So for yours, it's going to be identifying the fear. So wait, let all me right. do. Here we go. Okay, let's do it. All right, so it's all about, and people can Google this because I really don't care. I don't want to, I don't want to spend all my time helping people. So I'm totally fine with like learn the information. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Limiting beliefs. This is the thing that it's in the subconscious mind. Time. Time? Is limiting belief. Not, you, not having enough time. Ah. Are we writing? Are we making notes on what they are? Yeah, you can, or yours. Well, we can do so. We can do some of yours, and then some people may may not have the money. Oh uh, yeah, there's money. There's I don't feel good enough. There's time. There's confidence. You know, yeah. So let's see. Um, I don't have time. Don't have time. I mean, that here's the thing. I feel like with that, there's you would there's something that actually you would want to go. Um, You'd want to go further than that because there's a reason why you're, that's just closed off emotionally and available. So with that one, you'd actually want to go a step lower and go, why don't I have time for that? I don't want to do it because. Yeah. Instead of yeah. just having a, a problem, you turn it around into a question and find a solution. Yeah. So journaling is going to help you do that because again, so what happens is that people, all of us, it's human. We think that we know what our issues are. And I'm going to tell yeah. you right now, you fucking don't. Yeah. It's, you. a lot of us, you'll know in a general way yeah. but when you're constantly up in here right. if that's if that's your conscious mind that's your prefrontal cortex yeah. that's not what rules your behavior what rules your behavior is back here it's your subconscious so you can sit there and like try and figure things out in rubik's cube but you're going to drive yourself fucking nuts i'm all about less work so if anyone's confused on what their limiting beliefs are or what like like your big fears are journal the moment you journal, our arms connected to our brain stem, which is connected to our subconscious. I did not so, know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why, well, that's why you have people like me. That's why, um, that's why you're on the show. I know. So the I don't have time is a good one, but there's a step below it of like, there's a fear there. Okay. So the fear would be like, um, uh, because with the, here, that one you can easily do because you want not to, well, I got to make time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but the reason is like, usually it's this, it's a fear. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid that for a lot of people that I coach, it'll be like, um, I'm not, oh, my handwriting on this. I'm not good enough. <laughs> um, uh, I'm when, not. so for the, I don't have time or for yours, the blocking would be like, um, or, um, not going after it and focusing on work would be, there was something interesting that you said and talked about, which was, um, I don't want to bring someone in that yeah. ruins my career or that slows me down. Right. So right. the limiting belief, and that would be something along the lines of like, um, when I'm with someone, mm -hmm. it can take me off my, my game. Yeah. And so th that would be like the limiting b belief is that like, um, relationships will slow down, which you already, but you did something great, which is what this, all this is, is you challenged that thought when it came out. Yeah. 
we'll slow weed, weed down. Um, another, some other ones are like, what's another one? Um, I, uh, I, there's only, there's, there's only crazy women out there or crazy. We'll use, we'll use men. I believe that women. one too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can get the healed ones though. <laughs> I'll teach you how to do all that. Um, all right, so also, I'm, you know, I don't know if a lot of people think this way, but hmm. we're thir turning 35. I'm turning, yeah. turning 30, 35 now where most people have already been married. Yeah. They already have kids or like there's a lot of red flags, maybe a lot of baggage, you might Sometimes, say. Yeah. Um, not saying that baggage is bad. Yeah. But like, you know, a lot of men don't want to date someone that already has kids yeah that happens so we as, that. as we get older it gets more challenging to actually start dating other people as yeah well. so that that could be a limiting belief yeah of like um uh all women oh, only only women my age have kids oh i'm not good at the okay i'll get better at writing on blackboards but you guys get it so here's the thing. So with these, what you want to do is you want to get to the root of like why they're there. And, and like a lot of people have already been married and mm -hmm. like uh, don't want to get married again, you know. And for that person that hasn't been married before, they want that. And so that's also a limiting belief. Or that's that's a that's, that's an obstacle. If you're running into it. Yeah. If yeah. you're so if you're running into it and you're doing that, it's not about like. I guess it's not a limiting belief, but that could be an obstacle. It's an obstacle. Yeah. But the thing is, though, is that it's like, okay, so it, it's it's more of like. Um, again, you have to identify first what you even want because some of the things that like there are men out there that would that love a woman who already has kids because they kind of want to be that that dad. True. So it depends I'm not, on. I've got a stepdad. Yeah, same. I have a I have two stepdads. I yeah. got a dad and two stepdads. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> we all do family group outings together. It's nice. great. So it's mostly identifying like what you want first and then what's blocking you. So if you want a healthy, loving, amazing relationship and you want someone who's like got a great career with you, handles their own shit and like you guys are a team, then it's like, what's stopping you from doing that? Okay, well, I, um, I work too much and I hate going out. Yeah. Dating's been painful. Yeah. Um, every girl that I meet is always toxic. I don't feel good enough. Um, you know, uh, uh, I'm not safe. Whenever I open myself up, I, you know, I wind up getting hurt. That's a limiting belief. Now, do you teach these guys and women mm -hmm. to be alphas? Is that what you do? An actual alpha, not a fake ass alpha. And also, by the way, it's usually that's What's the, what is a fake ass alpha? <laughs> aggressive. Aggressive. Someone who thinks aggressive that they're too cocky, maybe. Yeah, because typically that's an easy tell that you yeah. don't believe in yourself. Yeah, low self esteem. Low, yeah, um, ego. And by the way, with women too. Yeah. With women, I, you should know me. Yeah, I'm the yeah, shit yeah. And it's of like course. you know or. You can see it. You can spot it. Yeah. The main thing is that whenever you're calling things in and you're noticing the same things over and over again, all women are this or all men are this. Right. That's an indicator that that's a U.S. thing yeah. that like you have trauma in yeah. and you're either going to keep um, dating people like that right. or you're going to turn into the toxic one who then like you're, you're going to project your shit on people. Yeah. That's the main thing. Alpha, first of all, it's clickbait. The guy who actually invented, this is a true thing, the guy who actually invented alpha, who said like alphas are lone wolves, yeah, yeah. he actually only studied alphas in like captivity. Since you brought up clickbait, not to yeah. cut you off, <laughs> um, again, sorry. No, you're good. And then I'm gonna dive into those ones. Uh, should we get? Should we finish that? Oh yeah, 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 okay. yeah, let's do this. Okay, let me do, um, let's do one of them. Okay. I wanna discuss dating sites. Dating site. Oh, it's good. Good. <laughs> okay. So limiting belief. We'll just do LB for that. Um, um, so one of my favorites to do is like, I'm not good enough. Now, this limiting belief will lead you to dating people who treat you like shit. Yeah. And then you accidentally get involved in narcissistic, abusive, sociopathic, toxic mm -hmm. relationships mm -hmm. where the person is cold so and it's cruel. Not right. Yeah. So the main thing is that it's like, we want to take ownership. Yeah. You don't want to blame yourself anymore and you want to keep shaming yourself because it's not, it, like, it's, it doesn't even come from you. It comes from your childhood. Yeah. Our subconscious is formed from the ages of two to 10. It comes from our childhood. So yeah. Can you yep. elaborate right on that? Your subconscious is formed from the ages of two to 10 up to 14. Okay. Anything that you receive, all the information, yeah. even if your childhood was great, the information that we receive, um, our subconscious starts forming and it starts like 
doing a filing cabinet of okay. like, uh-oh, that's bad. Uh-oh, that's bad. Uh-oh. We have to. We're okay. born with no fear. And in order for us to live and survive in this world, you kind of, you need some fear a little bit. Yeah. It's just that your subconscious stores some of it and it goes into like over fear. So how does that relate to limiting? Well, it's all, it, it, that's all it is. Those, so let's say for instance, that when you're growing up, um, your parents were fighting and you watched your parents fight yeah. and they're shouting at each other. Yeah. Love looked like yelling. Okay. Now later on, even though you don't like yelling, you keep suddenly dating people that shout. So you learn what, what's wrong or what's right or what you feel is wrong anyways. Yep. That, which becomes your limiting belief. Yep. And then that's locked in your brain. Exactly. Your, sub, your subconscious. Exactly. Consciousness. And then, um, when you're dating, you'll see it. That, that will affect your decisions long term exactly okay carl young said it i'm a big carl young person that's what i can do can you change that yes i mean even though yes you, even though you grew up like that no you can totally change that that's literally that's, what that's i do that's pretty much what we're discussing now. yes exactly so the i'm not good enough why and like for something for this so you want to yeah. journal and find out so this is these are habits that people need to break yep exactly um, and you can undo any of this and there's different modalities to do it there's you, you inner say child work. mindset habits not not really for physical habits i mean physical yeah, habits will be too because there'll be times where you're feeling off and you're feeling yeah. like you need validation and that's you put not. the phone down do not like that's a physical like that's do not go to the dating app yeah because you're now putting on those broken glasses and i guarantee you i've tested it on myself and so many clients you will not swipe correctly yeah. on the right person you will only swipe you will only see it's like a where's waldo effect Coming back to, to uh swiping now yes so, so first first yeah. <laughs> should, we, should we talk about Tinder a little bit? No. I know, right? I've been on that. Um, I could, I've actually met some good people on there. Yeah. Oh, here's the thing. When you have strong belief systems, yeah. you'll only see and call in okay. based on that belief system. Okay. So all of this is, is changing your mindset, changing your patterns, changing your behaviors. It all works together. Okay. Your thoughts mirror your mind. Your mind mirrors your thoughts. So what do you do first? And yeah, Behaviors. And through, through everything I've done, I've learned that everything starts with the mindset. Exactly. That's why you were able to like correct yourself when you said you set a limiting belief, but then yeah. you challenged it. Yeah. It's literally what you do. Yeah. So the I'm not good enough, the root of that is going to be when you were a kid, most likely for anyone who's listening and watching. Um, and this isn't, again, any area of your life. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that we care more about relationships. Right. So when you're a kid, um, you let's say that like you journal and you and you because if you don't know off the top of your head, journal. I would recommend it anyway. Your subconscious will know. So you go, okay, I'm not good enough. Where does this come from? And you start journaling, and all of a sudden it comes out like, oh, when I was a kid, my mom used to laugh at me, or my dad left me and made me feel like it was my fault, like I wasn't good enough for his love. Yeah. So now I keep dating people who leave me and make me feel like it's my fault and like I'm not good enough. So now I know the root is like dad. Dad left. Felt like abandoned. So you have to walk through your abandonment. Okay. So now you challenge it. Go to proving it wrong. How is that not true? Um, okay, I have a great job. Uh, I love my job. I love my dog is awesome. Um, I have a sick ass career. Um, my car is sick. I have amazing friendships that are always telling me like, you know, how good I am and like how I make them feel. Yeah. So you start challenging them. I'm not good enough. Bullshit. I yeah. love my car, job, house, like my relationships with my family. The rest of my family member is amazing. Yeah. So now that I'm not good enough, it doesn't hold water. It's bullshit. Next, you make a boundary. So the boundary in this one, you, there'd be a few. If you are consistently dating people who are, and I mean, this is where healing comes in. You would get with a, a professional on this one, but you can also like Google it and try on your own, but it can get a little heavy. Right. Is like, you can go back into your memory and reprogram that memory okay. so that you don't feel like a broken little child anymore mm -hmm. because you're repeating the cycle in your relationships. Okay. So the boundary now would be like, my favorites, the ones that I have crossed over so many times, I do not play with people who um, are emotionally available. Period, end of story. In friendships, relationships, career, nothing. I do not play with people who are emotionally unavailable. And what does that look like? Someone who can't show up for themselves, right. someone who is a disaster, someone who is addicted to drugs and alcohol, someone who can't show up for themselves and they can't show up for me. Um, another one is I don't play with people who are uh, flaky or abandoned. Oh God, I noticed this trigger a lot with, with guys. Um, sometimes they'll think I'm fake on a dating app, like I'm not real. And they'll freak out. <laughs> You're and too like, perfect. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, eh. 
Um, but the but the boundaries in that is like once you identify what you keep doing and kind of fucking yourself up in, yeah. now you can identify why, get help on it, reverse it, change it, and then um, I like validate it because it's real. That happens. That hurts. But it's your job to kind of like reparent yourself now instead of continuously throwing your inner child at a woman or at a yeah. dude, expecting them to fix you when you keep picking people who can't even fix themselves. And then boundaries. I don't play with people who are emotionally unavailable. I yeah. don't play with people who are abusive in any way. No mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual abuse. Okay. Boundaries. And then your ass sticks to your boundaries. Boundaries are not to control people. Right. They're not to manipulate people. They're right. not to go, I don't tolerate cheating, so you can't cheat on me. No, they can do whatever the fuck they want. But if you're noticing that you have a boundary somewhere, like I don't play with people who shout or yell yeah. because I grew up in this household or whatever, and I dating someone who shouts or yells, you, that's, that's, you can't keep control. You can, you can state the boundary. Hey, listen, I don't deal with people who shout and yell. Can we work on communicating and, and we don't yell at each other? And she's like, okay, great. But she keeps yelling and keeps yelling and keeps yelling. That's on you. Yeah. That's on you to leave. Right. So, cause now you're, you're aware, you're seeing it. Mm -hmm. And by staying, you're okay. It's to toxic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's where you can take your power back. Okay. It does, it, I, I make it sound easy, but it's like, honestly, when you go through and- Things that people need to work on. Yeah, yeah, it's it. every time that you are dating and you're seeing patterns or you're getting attached to someone, yeah. whatever you notice in them that you really, really like, that's in you. That means it's a reflection of you. So do you have any suggestions on how people can find their loved one? If, they're, if that's something they're trying to get better at, like- um, you know, going to the nightclub might not be the best idea, but then I've heard <laughs> people getting acquainted or, or running into each other or meeting others at a grocery store, for example. I've had clients meet their loved ones in a, like that they met someone from a while ago in another country. When you are unblocked and you're literally showing up for yourself, the way that you show up for yourself, yeah. the way that you treat yourself will be what you allow in probably and the more that you show for yourself yeah. the more that like no matter where you go you yeah. you will have people gravitate toward you i'm assuming having a hobby you know you oh might, yeah you might find somebody that's involved with the same hobbies as you meetup.com is one of my favorite ways to meet people okay. so many people get married off that site the reason why is because you don't want to use it again if you're using something because you're feeling inadequate you're going to call in inadequacy yeah I've tried the dating sites. Um, I like the dating sites. I love them. I because it's, it, it's different. Because I've noticed this so, when I'm feeling off and I'm feeling un, like like off, sad or whatever. Yeah, I don't yeah. match with anyone, or I don't match with the people that I'm, I'm kind of like ah. And I'm like, oh, I see what I'm doing. I, there. Yeah, I've met made some met some amazing women who I'm still in touch with today. Nice. Uh, yeah. That just didn't work out, you know. As yeah, uh, I made uh, amazing friendships on there. Right. Right. Uh, but then there's you know lately. Uh, I have been off these dating sites. I feel like there's so many fake profiles now. Uh, I've noticed that. On Facebook dating. And you do have to, so I did, I read an article on BuzzFeed. Oh, sorry, that's a No, I'm cutting you off. Um, there's an article that came out on BuzzFeed last year that there are employees that ha that create bots Yeah. because they're trying to get, and they're targeting employees. at men. Wow. They target it at men. They are targeting men um, to buy, they're to, to purchase shit in the app. Wow. Yeah, so that's the reason why. That's crazy. But still, either way, um, from someone who's like a real person on those apps, and yes, I'll be on Tinder. Yeah. Just because you can, other countries don't look at Tinder the way that we do. So I'm yeah. like, well, let me try it. I'm in crap. And a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll message somebody and then get no feedback, even though yeah. they swiped and yeah. we're, we're, we both swiped right. Mm -hmm. You know, and we match. I'll do that too, but because um, here's the thing. Like they're interested, but they're not that interested. No, that's a personalization. You have no idea what the fuck they're going through. True. You have no idea that's if true. like their ex called them back. So by looking at things and going like, damn, I fucked up or I'm not doing something right. As opposed to like, man, everything always works out perfectly for me. Cause mm -hmm. here's the trick. When you get offended and you feel like a personal thing and then you try and manipulate or make something happen that shouldn't even fucking happen. This is when you're now in your will. Yeah. You're not in alignment. You're only an ego. You're at you're out of whack, and yeah. now you're gonna wind up trying to make something work with someone who might be a narcissist. And this whole time, all you needed to do was like just trust the process. If someone matches you and they don't talk to you, could be a yeah. bot. Like, thank your lucky stars that you're not fucking wasting your time. Yeah. Or go ahead and waste your time and find you know find out. <laughs> Look around and find out and then call me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that yeah. every time, every single time. 
personally for me too, right. that I've been in my will, I've acted in my ego mm -hmm. and been like, fuck, I really want this dude though. He's so hot and he's got this following or this, that. Like, let me just make it work or like, let me say what I want, what I think he's gonna wanna hear. It, it, I've, I've gotten into some gnarly fucked up relationships or so, situationships. So what is the most attractive trait of a, of a guy that women look for? And, and vice versa, what do men really go after? You know, Looks, comes, I think. <laughs> I, yeah. Honestly, I'm, I, 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 yeah. I, mean, that, I, I'm only kidding with that. Well, I know. And yeah. in my younger years, yeah. um, it was a lot about looks, of course. Yeah. And, but as I get older, I'm like, I need a girl that's got brains and beauty. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm attracted to intelligence. I feel like that's been the big thing that's happened with men is that men have started to realize that like when they just got with the dumb bimbo, yeah. that they're like, I'm going to fucking blow my brains out if she opens her mouth one more time. Yeah. I swear to yeah. God. And which I, I I've been in that situation. Woo! I have two. <laughs> listen, like, I'm, I could be shallow. That's why I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I've been shallow for sure. And uh, like that, there's been times where like I've been with a guy with women what happens to us is because we're not visual as yeah. much yeah. we operate a diff in a different part of our brain mm -hmm. and this doesn't mean like male sex or female sex because it's um it's it's uh when you have like more estrogen or more no wait what's the one i'm butchering that the, in our brains there's certain areas so it's not like um it can happen even in more in men and even in more women it depends yeah. on where your brain is operating in um, and where your masculinity, where your femininity is, is operating in. So because male, female, any of that, we actually have both inside of us. Yeah. Everyone does. You have, uh, you have femininity and masculinity in you at all times. Right. So it's in your brain, which one is mostly in operation is kind of what you're identifying as. Okay. So for, um, people in, with, so you're saying women are not just attracted to guys with money. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. Um, there are some women, though, that are. Of course, of course. Yeah, because their sense of safety, if they came from nothing. Security. Exactly. Yeah. Because they might have been eaten on the streets. Yeah. Or like, like for but, me. But of course, oh, sorry. Yeah, no. Um, but these guys, if there's got, of course, if there's guys out there that don't have a ton of money, but they're good guys. You know, I also feel that's a, that's a very attractive. How many you know? times have you seen an amazing woman with a low life motherfucker? So that blows that all women all want men with money out of the water. You see it happen all the time. How many times have you literally watched an amazing, incredible woman get with some low life dude and you're like, what are you doing? I'm right here. He's, and he's a good guy. It, no. You, well, maybe. I don't know. It just depends. <laughs> <laughs> Any of it, it could be. What I'm saying is that it's not the money that matters. Yeah. Yeah. It's the what is the person's intention it's and great. how much work have they done on themselves? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because here's the other thing: if a woman is on her stride and she's a, a powerhouse as well, mm -hmm. of course she's going to get with someone who aligns with her, who's also going to be, you know, handling his shit and like, of course, yeah. doing that. It, it is what it is. Um, that's that's natural. It's it's so natural. Um, it just depends on yeah. Yeah. Uh, just like if a, a woman's attractive, you, you know, of course we. Even though I'm attracted to, you know, brains just as much as beauty. Yeah. Like, she's got to take care of herself, you know? Yes. Like, I'm not saying she's got to be a t supermodel. But the same way that a woman wants a like, man to take care of himself. But, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, if, you're eat like, if you're healthy, you know, mentally and physically and emotionally and stuff like that. I love that you said that. It's It goes back to when you are looking at someone yeah. and, you're, and you're dating them. This is important. The first two months is not the relationship period. It is only the dating period. You are getting to know how does that person show up for themselves? Yeah. Do they take care of themselves? Yeah. Because the way that they treat themselves yeah. is going to be the way that they are able to show up in their relationship. Right. And you can get frustrated all you want to, but when you're watching someone and they don't take care of themselves, they have, um, they have a lot of trauma, a lot of problems, um, they can barely shower or eat or feed themselves or handle their shit. Mm -hmm. They can't even show up for you, for themselves. Yeah. They're not going to be able to show up. And it's like, some people get so upset about that. And it's like, how can you expect someone to do for you what they can't even do for themselves? That's, you know, that's when you gotta, you have to start looking at like, Am I going in thinking that I need to do Captain Save a Ho? <laughs> or, or the with females we love we love yeah. the like I can change him. Oh God. <laughs> not, not too much. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, 
And that's the main thing. But um, for women, we're more visual, or excuse me, we're more feelers. Yeah. So there's been times where like for us, if we're on a date with someone, it can happen a little quicker. Mm -hmm. If we're sitting down next to someone and um, they, out of their mouth comes dumb shit. And it's like, even if they're like a really attractive person, like a nine, I hate doing the number system, but let's say that <laughs> I, know, it's I, I was trying not to I do know, it. I know, I know, it's so hard. All right, let's fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> People right. use it so you're able to do it. My, my idea on <laughs> it's that. It's so like, bad. My thought on that is like, you, only attract what you are like if you're a seven you're gonna attract sevens possibly if, i mean depending unless energetically you, if, like if you're like uh, if, unless you've got money and a woman's like going after the money or you're sexy you're but you know they're lacking in other areas yeah but it, you know I, yeah. The, the numbers game is tricky. The number game is tricky. I agree. Because I think I, that, like, I think that when you, you have to, like, break down what your number is, maybe. Yeah, you know what I mean? Be more realistic. I feel like you can attract what's on your level. Yeah. Like if, you, if you're a 10, you're going to attract other 10s. You're not going to attract a 5. You will. I mean, if, I mean, you're, if, you're, if you're a 10, yeah. you will attract 5. Here's my thing. But, but is, yeah. You, like, you're not going to be attracted to a 5 if you're a 10. I mean, kind of. Here's the thing. This okay. is what I'll say. You, you attract what you vibrate at. I think is the better way of because there'll be some tens and it's like here's the thing you're fun. you're perceiving them as a 10 that's your perception of them true someone else is going to look at them and not think that they're a 10 at all and think that you're fucking crazy that's true that's true so is that so a, you're is that, a, is that a bad no trait? it's no it, no like, no, no. Like, it's just that's natural though it's natural but it's the natural. thing is is that it's um you keep in mind this your your perception is gonna be different than other people's perception. Right. So that's why, like, think about it this way. How many times have you been with the bros and, like, you're like, yo, Jennifer Aniston's hot. And you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're like, Angelina Jolie is, like, out of the, you know? You don't, we don't, we don't walk with the same visions. True. And so, so like, even for girls. And, and that's the, yeah. Oh, especially for women. We'll look at a dude and, like, like we'll look at our friends and like look at like some what our what our friend is attracted to and we're like the fuck is wrong with you Becky and like but like everyone's got a different taste. Yeah. Beauty is literally in the eye of the beholder. So, you know your perception it's accurate too because it's like when you're perceiving a ten they're gonna go after other tens. When you're perceiving a five they're gonna go after other fives. Sure. For me I like kind of saying it's just like you attract what you vibrate at. So if you're that. feeling insecure, down and out, not loving yourself, you're gonna attract that. That's why you'll see Kim Kardashian's with Pete Davidson or Davids or whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, that's true. He's not, everyone's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't need the money. That's true. That's true. It's who he is as a person. I exactly. Guess. He makes her laugh most likely. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's a big one. But women, yeah, we're not as visual as men. So when we're with someone, yeah. if a guy is really attractive, but he opens his mouth and he um, says things that are just really dumb or like not on par with us or like we're just kind of like what um he will in front of our eyes look uglier like in like in an instant mm -hmm. with um now if if she's with someone and she's kind of attracted to him but he is like just loves himself knows what he's bringing to the table is not sitting there trying to fucking people please right. and is just enjoying the moment with her oh my god it just he goes up he goes skyrocketing high for men, what I've noticed in my experience, and it, it could be different with anyone, I've noticed that it happens with men too. It's just that it takes a little bit longer. And like when I've worked with them and we've uncovered the limiting beliefs, overcome them, and they actually have boundaries, I guarantee you what happens is the, the toxic chicks that you used to be attracted to, you you look at them and it's like your your vision's changed. The channel in your brain's changed. Mm -hmm. You don't see them the same way. You're like, oh my God, I was attracted to that. Yeah. The fuck? Yeah. It's the trauma girls. And you change over time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why I'm like, well, yeah. 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 Um, yes, sir. Well, anyways, <laughs> uh, Natalie, thank you so much. You're amazing. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> I'm very happy you came tonight. Uh, and for all of you watching, to, uh, please follow her on social media. Check out her website. Uh, Hopefully we can bring you back on soon. I would love that. I would love that. I like crash course everything. And I'm like, well, yes. I hope that people got something yeah. out of it. But. Yeah. And uh, so. until next time, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next show.